So, Democrats said that we could not do a border wall. It cost too much. The original amount was five billion. Then it was 14 billion. So they were saying five to 14 billion, that's way too much money for America to put a southern border wall. Would it blow your mind actually what it's cost to house migrants just over the last three years? Blow your mind. Not only that, you know, we can't have a border wall. We can't have voter suppression with IDs. However, the DNC in Chicago this week, you have to have a card with your picture on it. Ah, it's called a photo ID. You can't get in without that. And they've put up massive border fencing around the convention center. Why would they do that? Why would we need fencing around the DNC, but not our southern border? And then lastly, we're gonna talk about September 18th. What is September 18th and why is everybody talking about it even conservatives. September 18th, is it a big deal? Is it something we should be worried about? Let's talk about those three stories today. Hey guys, welcome to The Max. Thank you so very much for being here today. If you are new to our channel, uh, please go on here, press subscribe, ring the bell. Uh, if you like today's content, give us a thumbs up. The whole point of what we talk about is to hopefully bring some common sense and some wisdom to the crazy world that we live in, because sometimes it makes no sense, especially these politicians. And these three stories are good representations of that. Now, the first story we're gonna talk about today is the DNC. It starts, it's going crazy. I think today or yesterday was actually the first day that you started seeing people there. But in preparations to this, Chicago has gotten several sets of National Guard brought in. Now, at first you're like, well, maybe they're just there uh, just for you know safety of people. No. They're worried about people causing problems. Did you see the fact that someone dropped off pallets of bricks to cause mischief? Well, now the city has moved those and now they're trying to figure out why those bricks were there. But now you're starting to see reports that National Guard is being stationed in Chicago for the DNC. Isn't it amazing how they use the police state when it benefits them? Not only that, they've put up fencing fencing, two sets of fencing and barricades to where the DNC is safe from all the people outside. Again, isn't it amazing that our politicians are so good at putting up fence around their homes and around the events that they're at. However, our border is not that important. The most important thing would be protecting our nation, not just them personally. And instead of that, they were like, no, 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 no. We don't need border fencing. It costs too much. And, and we need uh, to, to leave, let people just be able to come and go as they, they want open border policy. However, if you look at the fencing, they've got dump trucks. They've got loads of fencing, two different barricades, concrete, also high fencing to keep the DNC goers safe. Then you ask, how, how would they get in? How do you know if you're supposed to be there or not? DNC makes you give a photo ID. You have to have identification to be able to go in. You have to have identification to go into the DNC. Now, not to vote. You can come open through our borders. You can vote however you want. But when it comes to the DNC, you have to have a border wall and fencing. And you have to make sure that you have a photo ID of who you are to get in there. Isn't it a little oxymoronic that that's the two things that the DNC pushed against, but now they're, they're instilling that for their conference and their convention. I think it's just a little funny. Now, that goes along to the second story of saying, okay, the big push for the border wall, which again, you could debunk that because of the money we've spent in Ukraine, but I digress. The biggest push was five to $14 billion was what the border wall was gonna cost, the fence was gonna cost. And that's why they kind of held it up. They were like, no, we're not gonna, you know, we're not gonna push this, it's, it's not worth the money. It's not a major problem. Well, we see it's been a huge problem this last three years. I wanna, I wanna bring up a story. Just take a guess of how much, how much it's cost just to house migrants. This is not talking about healthcare. This is not talking about anything else. This is talking about just housing and making sure, making sure that food is available for migrants. We were worried about spending four, five to 14 billion. A report from Disclosed TV came out and said the United States taxpayers, the taxpayers have spent $451 billion, listen to this, per year for housing and care for migrants, per year. So the last three years, you're upwards of what, what, 1.3 trillion? 
you're in the trillions for sure. $450 billion a year to house the migrants. But we were worried about spending $5 billion to build a wall. Again, isn't that funny? It's really sad more than it's funny. It almost makes you want to cry. I guess you got to laugh so you won't cry because it shows how much the taxpayers have been taken advantage of. And also the fact that our media spends this. You hadn't heard anything about that, have you? The fact that the border wall was five to 14 billion, but it's costing 450 billion to house the people that we've allowed to go in. But the DNC can have border walls, they can have a military state, and they can have photo ID uh, for their event, just to, to keep it safe, to make sure everybody is safe inside. is absolutely unbelievable to me. And then last story, what is important about September 18th? So, well, September 18th, and the reason people are talking about it, actually Michael Flynn came out and stated, and a lot of conservatives who are Trump fans came out and said the same thing. Should we be worried because we believe that that will be the day that Trump will be sentenced and put in jail? Leading report says retired General Michael Flynn also states that he believes President Trump will be put in jail on that day. That's the day of, of sentencing that was pushed off uh, for the case dealing with um, Rashawn and, and the case dealing with uh, Trump. Now, what actually will happen? Two things. Sentencing will take place. Now, will they put uh, Trump in jail? I think that they don't want that perp walk. I think that that would make him look stronger. But I do believe that they're going to do all they can to stop him from campaigning. So what if Juan Marshawn, this judge, comes out and says, well, yeah, he's not done bad enough things to make sure that we're going to put him in jail, but we do believe he should be on house arrest. Now think about that. Could that happen? Could they put him in jail or could they just simply say, look, we don't want the perp walk with that, well, that may give him some cred, so let's just put him in house arrest. Make it where he can't come out of his home. Well, that would stop campaigning and that would stop him from actually having a voice uh, when it comes to going to these events. Could that actually happen on September 18? I know people think that uh, we're crazy because we, we have our tinfoil hats on and all that, but think about the stuff that's happened against Trump. Think about the stuff that's happened against true conservatives. Think about the stuff that's happened against like people like Michael Flynn. I mean, don't believe that this country is, is, is too strong and too good to not do this and have this third world kind of situation where they would arrest the opposition. It will take place. Now, will it happen September 18th? I don't know. Jamie Raskin came out a few weeks ago and said, we have a plan just in case he does win the election, we can stop him. So you don't believe that they already are working on all these plans, all these scenarios, just in case the darling Kamala does not win, they have things in place. Now, this is where I go back and say, I don't have any faith in Republicans. <laughs> as a conservative, I believe our Republicans have let us down like always. Now, as lawfare and as uh, Trump may be sentenced on September 18th, a new report, breaking report, comes out that the House of Representatives now conclude that Biden should be impeached. Okay, so it is, it is literally mid-August, actually late August, two and a half months before an election, and now the Republicans believe that Biden should be impeached. I want you to think about that. To me, that shows all this money we've wasted on all these little trials and these scenarios and all this stuff, grandstanding, to lead up to a report to say something that we already knew years ago. And really, what, what does that mean? What is that going to do to say, okay, well, Biden should be impeached, what, two months before an election? What, I mean, what, uh, and Kamala be the president? Yeah, I mean, that would be great because I think it'd show how inept she is, but why are we waiting to this point to talk about this? It's kind of like the situation with Georgia and all of a sudden now they're finding, oh, oh, I mean, that 2020 could have been wrong. I mean, we, we actually now have found all these ballots. What, what can you do about it now? Republicans are good at talking about things they want to do, but actually doing things and making action to their words doesn't happen. So like, for instance, talking about yesterday with Trump saying no income tax and things like that, we, we actually need to do these kind of things. Because remember, when Democrats say open border policy and, and defund police and uh, no ID to vote, they're putting all those things in place for the Democrat DNC convention in Chicago. So why are we not bringing attention to that? 
Why are we good at talking about issues but not actually not act, giving action to the words? For the longest, Comer and Jordan and all these conservatives have been grandstanding and talking about how uh, the you know how how the last three or four years Biden should have been impeached, and now they want to really bring up charges of impeachment. What two months before an election? It's all a falsity. So. Will Trump be arrested on September 18th? I don't know. But I do believe that he has no support when it comes to these politicians because they're all pretty much mauled off. Lindsey Graham, uh, the darling of the Republicans and, and really supposed to be a supporter of Trump, which I believe is a complete, utter politician that's slimy, came out and said, you know, all this, this rhetoric about Trump, I don't know if Trump's going to win this thing. Well, the reason he's probably not winning is because he has people like Lindsey Graham who's actually talking, but actually not doing action. What has he actually done? What have a lot of these senators and these congressmen truly done for Americans? We're still paying crazy amounts of taxes. We still have an open border that could have been closed during Trump's first few years, because remember, we had the House, we had the Senate. So a lot of times we become our own worst enemy, and now we're seeing the repercussions of some of those problems and we want to blame Biden, we want to blame Kamala, we want to blame the Democrats, and yes, they deserve a lot of blame, especially the last four years of $450 billion a year to support migrants. But truth be told, how much can we trust Republicans to do their job when 2016 to 2018 we had the House, we had the Senate, and we had the President, and Trump couldn't get a border wall passed because of them. But now they'll grandstand and talk about how dangerous the border is. Isn't it a little crazy? This is where I go back and say, can you trust politicians? And also, this is why I think people like Trump and people like Vivek get traction. And people like podcasters, you know, the Rogans and all, get traction. PBD gets traction. Sean Ryan gets traction because it's not fake anymore. It's just real people talking and not these sleazy politicians. So am I hating on all the politicians? Probably. <laughs> I just believe that I'm tired of hearing, I just, as an American, I'm tired of hearing politicians grandstand, talk about all the stuff they're going to do and never do them. And then the stuff that they preach against, like, you know, IDs to vote and, uh, you know, border walls and things like that, the DNC has embraced every one of them to get into the DNC convention hall, but not for our election, which is so much more important. It's amazing how much we put our faith in politicians to ultimately be let down each and every year by them. So pay attention. What's going to happen on September 18th? It's a pretty big deal. I don't believe they'll do a perp walk and I don't believe he'll be arrested, but I do believe they're going to try to find ways to put him under house arrest. Maybe wrong. They may actually try to perp walk and put him in jail. I believe that they're going to make it harder for him to campaign though because that's where he shines and he has an open mic pretty much anytime he campaigns. Now. That's just one thing. There's a lot of time left before this election. We think it's not, but there's a lot that can take place September, October, and the 1st of November. They usually call it an October surprise, but I think it's more than that. We have, we're facing several wars. We're facing several uh, collapses when it comes to our economics. And we have someone who's supposed to be leading us that no one's hardly seen, Biden. So there's a lot that can take place before this election, and there's a lot that can take place even after the election before Trump or Kamala takes the helm for 2025 to 2028. We have to pay attention to what's going on. September 18 may come and go, but I believe we're going to see more black swan events, and this may be the start of them. All these situations happening. The DNC has fallen to pieces. The DNC wants you to believe that it's hope and joy and, and perfect. Outside, there's more protest and, and a bus park to give you free vasectomies and abortions, though. We need to, as conservatives, bring attention to how crazy some of these policies are and start actually, what we talk about doing, we need to actually fulfill and put actions with our words. That's what I think we need from conservative politicians. Trump talks about taking away taxes. He needs to. Put tariffs in. He needs to. We need to get back to actually doing the things that we talk about doing. That's my challenge for politicians. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think about these three stories. And should we trust the politicians when they tell us something now compared to when they told us five to eight years ago? Should we believe they're going to actually fulfill what they set out to do? 
and we talked about impeaching Biden, and all of a sudden now the report comes out that we should two months before the election. <laughs> Took them four years to decide that. It's unbelievable. Guys, let me know your thoughts. God bless.